Are you and your significant other looking to improve your communication and conflict management skills? If so, then you're in the right place. My name is Leon. This is Body Mind 360 and in this video, I will explain to you everything that comes with my couples communication and conflict management package. I will also review with you samples of the reports that you will receive with your purchase. If this is your first time watching and you like my content, then make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to be alerted of new videos. Now let's get started. I created the Couples Communication and Conflict Management Package when I noticed just how helpful and practical I found the feedback to be within my own personal life, and I soon found others who seemed to have the same experience. With divorce rates at over 50% and pushing over 75% here in Southern California, it is abundantly clear to me that we could all improve our communication and conflict management skills. With your purchase, you and your significant other will both gain online access to completing the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Assessment, along with the Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument, the TKI. You will both receive your own Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Interpreter Report, along with your TKI Profile and Interpreter Report that includes specific feedback on relating your results to communication, conflict management, dealing with change, and making decisions. You can download sample PDFs of these reports in the description below. With your purchase, you will also receive a 60-minute group video consultation with me and your significant other, where I will verify your Myers-Briggs personality type results and review your reports with you. I can also accommodate phone consultations upon request. If you would like to learn more about me and my background, then you can watch my channel introduction video linked in the description below. Now, for the next part of this video, I will go ahead and review the PDFs that you will receive with your purchase. As noted earlier, you can find download links to a sample report in the description below. Okay, so we're going to begin by taking a look at the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Interpret Report. If you open up your sample or just follow along on the screen, um, this very first page here um, is just going to be your cover page. So right now it's uh, Mr. Sample that we're working with, Mark Sample. Um, going on to page two, this is going to get you a, a bit of an introduction to the step two. Uh, a quick review of the main um, polar opposites when it comes to extroversion, introversion, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, and perceiving. This is the same as it is with the step one instrument. But again, a nice little introduction and refresher. On page three is where you're gonna actually see the meat and potato of your initial step one results. And when we say step one, it just basically means your four letter type. In this case, this individual was an ESTJ. Uh, the most important data here is at the bottom of this report where you're going to see the probability index for each of your MBTI preferences. These scores, depending on how far away they are from center and how close they are to each extremity, um, is going to give us information on how confident we are in your results. So this individual, um, we have pretty good confidence that they are an ESTJ especially their extroversion uh, probability index and sensing probability index is really, really high. And also uh, thinking and judging are also quite inconsistent. Now, from my experience, it's very common to see results drop into that somewhat likely, the light green territory. Um, and when that happens, it pretty much prompts me to push for a secondary conversation during our consultation where we're going to see if... Uh, anything was potentially misassessed. What's nice about the step two though that we'll see in a moment is we're gonna have the benefit of facets uh, that will help us clarify 
why potentially the overall probability index was lower, which again, there's nothing wrong with it, but uh, lower probability index scores closer to 50 are gonna lower our confidence in the initial results. Now, page four is gonna introduce you to the facets. And you can basically think of these as subcategories that go under the four main dichotomies. So there's five per extroversion and introversion. As you can kind of see here on the left-hand side, uh, extroversion tends to relate to initiating expressiveness, being gregarious, active, and enthusiastic, while introverts tend to be more on the receiving, uh, contained, intimate, reflective, and quiet side. So you'll get a little introduction to all this. And of course, through our conversation, I'm more than happy to answer any additional questions. Uh, the next page is where you're going to get the actual data for the facets. Um, each page is going to focus on one of the dichotomies. So here you have your actual scoring for extroversion and introversion. Um, whichever one you assess that is highlighted kind of in dark blue here. But also you have your specific scores. Now the scoring here is a little unique because unlike step one results, where you're either on one side of the fence or another, you're you know, either assessed as extrovert or introverted. Here you can score in preference, which means for an extrovert, it would be in preference to be expressive, as you see this individual, um, or out of preference. So you can have an extrovert that, for example, is contained, which can happen for specific adaptive reasons, but it's not traditional. But unlike step one, you can also score in a mid zone. And that's what you see here in gregarious and intimate. Uh, and a mid zone, this is not a natural state. Based on MBTI theory, you are not born in the mid zone. Uh, it is definitely related to adaptive elements of your lifestyle. So it could be that maybe at work, you have to be more gregarious. Uh, let's just say if you're an introvert, um, but you're naturally more focused on that intimate um, connection and maybe in your personal life you lean towards that and then when you need to be more gregarious at work you kind of hit that switch and this is how it may come up for example. Uh, the feedback uh, is also unique which I really like so you'll notice um, below the actual scores you're going to say you know ways to connect with others this has to do with initiating receiving and then noted that you know you scored in the mid zone and the feedback directly to the right of it is related to you scoring in the mid zone. Just like in the other ones, it will tell you, hey, you're expressive in preference, or if you're out of preference, which this individual is not, it would give you specific feedback. So really good information uh, that goes a step further than that basic step one results. It's also one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of promoting the step two report as opposed to the more basic step one reports. Uh, as you go on, page six, the next page is going to have the same format, but now sensing and intuition. Similar rules apply. Page seven, uh, same thing, but now notice this individual. They are assessed as a T, but they have uh, two areas that are out of preference. So we would consider this person a tender and accepting thinking-based individual, which again, statistically, is very unlikely because, not unlikely, but it's less usual as a traditional thinking-based individual is much more likely to be more critical uh, and tough. So um, there's nothing wrong with these results, but it kind of helps differentiate us. This thinking individual uh, versus maybe somebody else um, that uh, didn't really develop that accepting and tender side. Uh, on page eight, again, similar data for judging and perceiving. Um, once you get to page nine, you are going to now get specific feedback on some of the content sections we discussed or mentioned earlier. And that's uh, applying step two results to communication in this case. So it's going to look at your facet results and it's going to give you feedback on your specific communication style. But also what I really like is tips for enhancing your style. So there's always a polarity to this feedback. So if you're, for example, really expressive, well, there's going to be situations where you may not have the same strength. So uh, it's natural, for example, for you to say what is in your mind to those present. But recognizing when it's important not to say what's in your mind uh, and then don't say it, that's something that, you know, an expressive extrovert may sometimes struggle with and they can get in trouble with it. So, um, again, some really good practical tips on that. Page 10 
is going to apply results to managing conflict. Same idea here. Yeah, we're going to have natural innate strengths. And then there are things that are going to be able to do to improve on our weaknesses. Now, some individuals may read this and say, hey, I already do that, which is great. Because the idea is that throughout your life, you're going to want to work on becoming more uh, flexible, more adaptable, and draw strength from your place as a weakness. Uh, not everybody's at the same place at the same time. So for some people, this is th these are things that they really need to work on. For others, it's already past your checklist and like, hey, I can do really well uh, in my natural state, but I'm also, I got it covered when I'm out of preference. And again, that would be the ultimate goal. Page 11 is going to apply results to dealing with change, uh, something that a lot of people struggle with. So again, it talks about your change management style based on specific facet results. And then also tips on enhancing your style again. So make up for some of those natural weaknesses that innately occur. Uh, page 12 is applying your results to making decisions. And it's going to talk about um, your decision-making style. Um, again, I'll discuss this more during one-on-one -on -one consultations. But um, again, depending on the two middle letters, so either sensing or intuition and thinking and feeling, what combination you have there is going to provide a unique kind of perspective on making decisions, how we process that information, internalize it, and then make decisions based off that processing. And here what's great is going to actually identify, so this person is logical and reasonable. I'm going to give you unique tips for that combination, um, uh, feedback, and then additional tips below. Page 13 is going to go a little deeper and it's going to kind of go into the territory of talking about type dynamics. For a lot of people, this may be a little bit more advanced um, and maybe TMI. Uh, but here it's going to, again, give you the order of your prioritizing. So an ESTJ, uh, their most favorite process is utilizing thinking first. Then their second uh, dairy uh, process is utilizing sensing internally, followed by intuition. And then their least preferred method is feeling, which makes sense. ESTJs, you know, connecting on the feeling side, um, developing their ability to being sympathetic and empathetic sometimes is a bit of a struggle. Um, and again, um, especially when dealing with people they don't know too well. Um, so this is one of those things that will kind of give you a visualization of those preferences. Um, optimally, we would work on those weaknesses and uh, develop them into kind of minor strengths, but it is something that everybody will go on their own pace and doing. Uh, page 14, um, it's going to give you more feedback on utilizing your type effectively um, across the board and talking more about the facets, so great little extra tips. Um, and then 15, it's going to talk about kind of bringing things together. As I mentioned earlier in this video, when you go out of preference, it's going to identify you as a slightly different version of the base type. So this person, person is an ESTJ, but they were out of preference when it comes to being more accepting and more tender focused than the average ESTJ. So quite literally, um, this individual would be an accepting and tender ESTJ. And that's kind of how it's notated here. Um, these last two informational pages are going to start with an overview of your results. This is just a nice little reference sheet where it's going to show you all your scores for your facets and all your preferences uh, in one space. And then the page that I get the most questions about is this page where we talk about interpreter summary based on reported type. This, in a nutshell, is really meant for us as certified interpreters. We don't expect you to understand this, but this is kind of the scientific data behind your results. So what you're seeing here is these little numbers is where you actually scored on these scales. Okay, You're going to see this green territory and a blue line. So the blue line basically um, represents the average score uh, on the global samplings for ESTJs. So if you were to take all the samplings that they have and combine them, you're going to see that the average ESTJ scores here on uh, towards initiating. The green to the left and right represent one standard deviation. So when your score falls near that 
on that little blue line or within that range, that's within a normal range. It's what we expect. So here you kind of see that for extraversion, it's all, you know, it's on polarizing sides of the averages, but it's still within that range. And couple the areas, best example here is thinking, um, they fall out of that range. So even though, for example, it's not uncommon for an ESTJ to score right in the mid zone for critical or maybe slightly like a one towards uh, accepting, this individual scored a two. So it's outside of that norm and outside of that standard deviation. So it's something that flags myself as a professional say, hey, let's discuss this. Uh, even bigger example is that tough versus tender. They scored a four. This is really out of the norm. Because as you can see, the average scores barely fall out of the mid-range. So it's, very, uh, it's quite uncommon statistically to score so far towards the tender. Uh, and again, a uh, good push for further discussion on it. Um, so that's what this really represents. Um, you're also going to have a polarity index, and really this is measuring consistency. This is not a thing where you need to get 100, like this, wow, 0 to 100 rating and you scored a 59. That's not like a failing score or anything like that. Uh, but basically, uh, as noted in the notes here, most individuals will score somewhere between 50 and 65. It just tells us that you're being consistent with your answers. If somebody's randomly answering questions, uh, this will pick up on that. You know, sometimes when people are trying to force something or they're confused, um, this will point that out to us as well. So again, higher is fine, but uh, as long as the score doesn't get too low, it's not as big of a concern. And finally, number of emitted responses. Now you do want to make sure when you take this assessment, whenever possible, complete all of the assessment. Take your time, there's technically no time limit. There are no right or wrong answers. You don't want to be stressed out when you take this assessment. Take it when you have lots of time, when you're in kind of a good mental state, because if you're upset, or angry, um, you're much more likely to respond uh, differently than if you're in a calm state. So that's the report. Uh, I hope this helps you out in giving you initial understanding of what you'll be receiving. And again, we'll be discussing this in further detail during your call. So now we're going to go ahead and review the Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument uh, Profile Interpreter Report. Uh, again, uh, cover page. And on page two, you're going to be introduced to the five main conflict handling modes. Uh, they have different levels of assertiveness or unassertiveness, and they can either be cooperative or uncooperative, um, as you can see here on this diagram. On page three, you're going to get a little bit more of a description of these modes. Um, they aren't what you would always innately think them to be. So there's some negative associations and connotations of words like avoiding. Avoiding is not innately negative. It can be if it's overutilized, uh, but um, you definitely want to understand what the definitions of these are when used in this tool set. Um, on page four is your main data. And really what you're looking for here is seeing, uh, compared to the specific sample that was utilized, um, how much you utilize and relate to uh, utilizing the five different conflict modes. So you can be within a normal range that's within that 25 and 75th percentile. Um, you can also be what's considered an uh, overusing or underusing certain uh, modes. So this individual tends to overuse accommodating a little bit, um, probably underutilize collaborating uh, quite a bit, um, and is pretty much within a range for most of the other ones, a little bit more on the competing than we like and slightly less on the avoiding. Um, on page five, it's going to describe a little more interpreting your score. Uh, and then they're going to go into providing you specific feedback, and we discussed this as well during the consultation, um, what it really means, how to effectively utilize each of the styles, because they all have a purpose. Uh, none of them are good or bad. If you want to think of it this way, uh, when you're in a conflict, you're going to have a way that you prefer to approach conflict. If that's compatible, with the other individual you have the conflict in, you're much more likely to see eye to eye and downplay that conflict and then deflate it um, and 
get back to proper communication. If you have contrasting styles, it could be like two bulls butting heads in a china shop and nothing but chaos occurs. This is why I guarantee you, you have people in your life, professionally, personally, uh, that sometimes you just get along with and you rarely fight or argue or have issues and other individuals, um, it just seems that you can never be on the same page. It's just like pulling teeth to communicate with them uh, and deal with conflicts. So this will talk about that and it will provide this for each of the sections. Um, as you can see on the next section, so here's the data for competing, again, uses, questions to ask, signs of overuse and underuse, um, continued, and so forth. So very straightforward. It's actually a very easy report to, to read, um, but I will provide specific feedback as it relates to your situation when we utilize this in a package. I hope that this video has given you a good understanding of the consultation process that I provide with my Couples Communication and Conflict Management Package. If you're enjoying my content, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to be updated when new videos drop. And for watching until the end, you can enter discount code COUPLESCOM2020 at checkout for $10 off your purchase. See you next time on your journey to a healthier body and mind.